Hey there everybody, welcome to Auto Bears, and this is the revised or 2021 Seat Ateca. In 2016, Seat shocked the automotive world by announcing that they were bringing out an SUV. And although the Ateca was late to the game, it went straight to the top of its class. Here we had a car that was really good looking, practical, but most importantly, it was genuinely good fun to drive. It actually felt like a Seat SUV. And as a result, it's been a huge hit for the Spanish brand. Now granted, as the years have rolled by, we have had some new arrivals appear and the Ateca has been knocked off the top spot. But for 2021, Seat have given it a bit of a midlife refresh with new exterior and interior design, improved tech and a refresh to the engines. And I've had this new Ateca for a week and I'm gonna let you know if it's still the sporty SUV that we've come to love. Styling wise, well, Seat didn't really have to do much to this Ateca in order to give it a bit of a midlife refresh because it was already a really handsome and distinctive car. So yes, we have got new front and rear bumpers with a little bit of a backside there as well. And granted there are fake exhaust vents, but they are filled in with parking sensors so they're not completely useless. I do like the new headlight design and tail light design. And if you look, we've even got scrolling indicators. But really the main way to tell that this is the new Ateca or revised Ateca is at the name badge where it actually has that handwritten look, which we first saw on the new Seat Leon. And if you click up in the top right hand corner, you can watch my review of that new hatchback. But all in all, yes, the Ateca has had its midlife refresh. It does look sharper at the front and back, but it's still a very handsome car. And I think that's enough of looking at the outside of this new Ateca. Let's have a little look at the inside. Sat in the front of the new Ateca, you are greeted by a very comfortable and well laid out interior, but it's not the most exciting in terms of design. Now, of course, this being a mid-sized SUV, you've got a nice high seating position, so getting in and out of the Ateca is really easy. So if you do suffer from any kind of mobility issues, then this is definitely one car to consider. And then once you sat in the driver's seat, you find that the seats themselves are very comfortable. They even hold a big bear like me in place, and there is plenty of adjustment. Even in the steering, where we have both rake and reach adjustment, to get in the perfect driving position is easy. Next, we've got interior quality, which is actually pretty good in here. So just like the pre-facelift, we have got soft touch plastics here on top of the dash, on top of the doors, and we've got a leatherette trim here on the door panel and on the armrests. And then just from the infotainment screen downwards, yes, we have got hard scratchy plastics, but there is a nice bit of satin and chrome trim in here to liven up the interior. But as I said, it's not the most exciting in terms of design, but it is ergonomically sound. Cubby spaces are actually pretty good in here as well. We've got some really decent sized door bins where you can get a couple of bottles of drink in there, but they're not lined with any fabric, so loose items will rattle around a bit. Then in front of the gear lever, we got a dedicated slot to put your mobile phone. There is wireless charging on this particular car and there's a little bit of a gap on the side of it there. So you could put some pens or some loose change in there. We've also got two USB-C inputs and a 12 volt socket. Then behind the gear lever, we have got a couple of cup holders. Now, one of them is really deep, so your tall coffee will easily fit in there. And the other one is a bit shallower, but they are both rubber lined, which is really handy. And then behind, the cup holders we have got the armrest we've got an extra bit of uh, storage space there which is pretty handy and what i do like about the armrest is that you can lift it up and slide it forward for longer journeys so that is really handy and then we've got the glove box which is of a decent size again it's not lined with any fabric so loose items will rattle around a bit but you know what it is still a useful feature and then we have got a little storage space here for your sunglasses and even some storage underneath the driver's seat. So that will come in very handy if you need to tuck anything away in there that you're not going to use on a regular basis. So that is a pretty good design. Now, because this is a facelifted attacker and not an all new car, it does retain a lot of the key features that the pre-facelift had, which are actually really handy. So for example, with the dual zone climate control, they are physical dials and buttons, which make it really easy to operate, especially when you're on the move. We haven't gone the way of the Seat Leon and Cupra Fermenta yet, where everything's operated via a touchscreen. Now, speaking of the touchscreen, it is a 9.25 inch display. It is really clear and easy to use whilst you're on the move. You even get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and on this particular car, wireless CarPlay as well. 
so that is a nice cool feature then we've got the gear lever which is of nice leather bound gear knob and uh, it's not gone away again of the drive by wire systems that we have seen on newer Volkswagen Group cars such as again like the Leon and Cupra Fermenta. Then just behind that we've actually got a dial for the drive mode select which I do like and I have a feeling if you've got the 4x4 version of the Ateca there could be a 4x4 mode on there as well so it's nice and easy to use again whilst you're driving from switching from one mode to the other. We have then got an electric handbrake with an auto hold function, again something I do like. The only real negative I've actually found in here is that we haven't got a digital display. It's actually just a standard analog display and it is starting to look a little bit dated. And what I don't like as well is that the actual dis uh, display on the steering wheel controls actually show a digital display from going from left to right in regards to the menus. So that's something I'd like to see updated on this new Ateca or at least get a digital cockpit in here. I mean come on this is nearly top of the range. But other than that it's a nice comfortable interior and yeah it's actually really sound ergonomically. I just hope they don't change it too much when the all new Ateca comes out in a few years time. But that's enough of sitting in the front of this new Seat. Let's go and sit in the back. Sat in the back of the Ateca, there is still plenty of space back here and this is definitely one of the highlights of this family SUV. Now that driver's seat is set to my driving position. I'm 5 foot 7 tall and 5 foot 7 wide and as you can see I've got loads of knee room and headroom is really impressive as well. You could definitely get a couple of six footers sat in the back of the Ateca and I definitely think you can get three kids back here but probably not three adults because if they've got broad shoulders like me they'll definitely feel the squeeze. Now speaking of kids, there are Isofix supports on the outer seats and they're nice and easy to affix a child seat because there's actually no covers to them, so that is really handy. Cubby spaces are really good in here as well. We've got some decent sized door bins where you can get a medium sized bottle of drink. We've got the aeroplane style pockets on the backs of the front seats and we've also got an armrest with a couple of cup holders and also we've got a ski chute where you can load through from the boot. So if you've got any longer items, that is really handy. Also on the back of the main armrest, we've got a couple of air vents and also two USB-C charging inputs. So that's really handy if you've got kids back here with mobile devices. Also, it's nice, light and airy back here. The windows are of a big size. Yes, they do open all the way down. And also on the C-pillar, you've got that additional window to provide extra light in here. So at no point do you feel it's dark, gloomy or claustrophobic, which is a real highlight. So all in all, yes, this is a really spacious SUV to be in, particularly for adults as well as children. But I think that's enough of sitting here in the back of the Ateca. Let's see what our boot's like. Opening the boot of the revised Ateca presents you with 510 litres of space, which is actually still pretty decent for this segment of car, although it's not class best. But what I love about it is that it's a nice square load area so you can get large bulky items into the back of your mid-sized SUV. We've got a couple of tethering hooks there and they are quite substantial. Plus we've got a couple of handles and if you give them a quick pull you can get the suits down in one go and it is a 60-40 split. As I mentioned you have got that ski chute so longer items can go through into the rear passenger area. It's not all perfect though, there is a little bit of a boot lip you need to navigate over however there is room there for a variable boot floor so just have a chat with your dealership about getting one fitted and there's no 12 volt socket which is a little bit surprising however under the boot floor you have got your tire puncture repair kit plus a little bit of additional cubby space if you want to use it or you could get yourself a space saver spare wheel but what i do like is if you do get the seats down yes there is a ledge at the base of the seats so navigating any large bulky items could be a bit tricky but you get just over 1900 litres of space in total so that is quite van like but all in all it's a really nice decent amount of room and space in the back of the Seat Ateca in terms of boot capacity and it's absolutely fine for everyday living but I think that's enough of looking at the boot of this new Ateca we've got to take it for a drive haven't we definitely
So once you get driving in the newer Tekka, first impressions are still really positive. It's a nice easy car to drive and it is very comfortable to be in. I got a lovely raised seating position, the seats themselves are very comfortable, but I have got one tiny little criticism in regards to the driving position and it's probably down to my body shape, but because I've got quite thick thighs I do find that the centre console just slightly pushes my left leg in a little, but it's only a minor quibble. I have done a long journey in the Ateca and I didn't actually find it that uncomfortable, but it's just something I've noticed when you sit in the car. And I also mentioned that I didn't like the fact that we've got analog dials on this particular spec and not digital dials like you get on the FR and the top of the range Experience Lux. But you know what? The dials themselves are incredibly clear and easy to read, especially when on the move and having a quick glance down. So that is one positive. Visibility is also really good. I mean, we've got reasonably thick A pillars here at the front of the car, but they're around about the same as anything else in this class. But looking over your shoulder, you actually find you don't have the thickest of C pillars. Now, granted, the window in the C pillar does kind of go up at an angle to give it that sporty look, but it doesn't really take away too much of your visibility. So all round visibility is really good and I do like the view out the back of the Ateca as well. I've not really felt that I've needed blind spot monitoring on this Ateca, even though it doesn't come on this particular trim. So. All in all, first impressions on this revised Ateca are really positive. It's still a lovely car to drive. When it comes to trim levels in the Ateca's range, you've got six to choose from. The entry level SE and SE technology, which is more of a fleet based trim level. The FR and FR Sport. The Experience, which is what I've got here. And the top of the range Experience Lux. Now my pick of the range would actually be kind of going Pick the FR and go upwards because you get pretty much all the standard spec that you would need. However, just double check what the cars come with because you might be in for a couple of nasty surprises. For example, this nearly top of the range experience doesn't come with heated seats. Now that to me was a genuine surprise and actually a bit of a disappointment as well. I mean, a lot of cars in their mid-level trims tend to get heated seats and we're nearly at the top of the range and we are without them so that was a little bit disappointing as i mentioned you don't get the digital cockpit but you can go for i think it's the fr sport and you do get a digital cockpit with that trim level so again just double check the trim levels that you're after to make sure you get the kit that you want but the good thing about the Seat Ateca is that it's still reasonably priced compared to a number of its rivals. So either way, you should come away with a decent amount of kit for your money. But yeah, just kind of look at the FR and upwards. Now there are quite a few engines in the Ateca range, but it does depend on what trim level you go for, which depends on what engines are available. So there is an entry level one litre TSI, which is a three cylinder with 108 brake horsepower, and that's mated to a six speed manual only. And you'll find that on the lower down trims. We then have the 1.5 litre TSI's, which is what I've got here with 148 brake horsepower. And you can have that mated to either a six speed manual or what I've got here, a seven speed DSG. They have then got a two litre petrol with 188 brake horsepower and that's DSG only. And then we've got the diesels. So it is a two litre four cylinder turbocharged diesel with 148 brake horsepower. And you can have that mated to either a six speed manual, seven speed DSG, or if you go for the four wheel drive version of the Ateca, which is diesel only, again, a seven speed DSG. But as I mentioned, you just got to make sure you got the trim level you want to get the engine you want, and that way you will be really happy. But my pick of the engine choices would definitely be the 1.5. It's just the perfect all-rounder. It's got a decent amount of performance for the size of car, and it's actually reasonably frugal. Now, say it, say I should get between 39.8 and 43 miles per gallon on a combined cycle. Now, the car I've been in this week has just done about a thousand miles, so it's probably not fully bedded in yet, but I did manage to achieve 39.2 miles per gallon on a long run so i do believe say and agree that that mpg range is achievable 
but of course if you are doing loads of miles on the motorway then I would definitely recommend one of the diesels because it will be a lot more frugal but the 1.5 is just a lovely sweet engine it's a tried and tested engine as well in the Volkswagen group and what I do like is that it does come now with cylinder deactivation on the Ateca so you can drive around in just two cylinders so again that will just help with boosting the car's economy and it's also a very sweet engine as well it's got very little in the way of noise coming through into the cabin it's only when you really put your foot down that you do hear it and you do hear that distinctive four cylinder thrum but other than that it's absolutely fine but if you're after the one litre then you've got to go for a lower down spec so i've got the 1.5 litre tsi mated to that seven speed dsg and i think it is a really nice combination the gear changes are really smooth and you can barely hear them and you don't actually feel them at all unless you really are quite forceful with putting your foot down on the accelerator the only time you really kind of feel the disadvantages of the dsg is when you're pulling away from a standstill where it can be a little bit hesitant and sluggish when uh, engaging and pulling away but other than that it's absolutely fine and if you put it in sport mode it is actually a really quick changer and i do love the fact you've got flappy paddles on the back of the steering wheel and you've got the manual mode as well with the gear stick as i said we haven't yet gone to the drive-by-wire little lever which we've seen now on new volkswagen group cars like the leon octavia golf and audi a3 but it is a nice combination but if you are after a bit more power of course you can go for that two litre petrol with just shy of 190 brake horsepower and that will definitely give you an extra boost in performance however it is going to hit you in terms of economy and also with the price of the car so that's just something to be aware of so what's the ride refinement and handling like in the new Ateca? Well, ride-wise, this was always considered an Achilles heel for the Ateca because the ride was quite firm. But then again, that lent to that sporty feel in this SUV. And I can tell you that the ride is pretty much the same. I mean, it is a little bit firmer than most of its rivals, but it does mean it handles brilliantly, and we'll get onto that in a moment. But for day-to-day -day driving, I've had no issues at all with the suspension, the ride and adapting of the Ateca. It's absolutely fine for day-to-day -day driving. I have found, however, doing a long journey in the Ateca, it wasn't the most comfortable of rides because I could feel all the little bumps and imperfections on the motorway when I was just cruising along at 70 miles an hour. And it meant that it didn't really feel like the most settled of rides. So that was something that did disappoint me a little bit. But when it came to refinement, it was actually pretty good. Very little in the way of engine noise, also very little in the way of tyre roar. It was really just a bit of wind noise off the wing mirror I heard coming into the cabin, driving without any music going. So in terms of refinement levels, it's actually still pretty good. And then we come on to the sweet spot, which is the handling in the Ateca. And this is where it trumps pretty much all of its rivals now granted i've not driven a couple of the new arrivals like the new ford cougar and the very striking hyundai tucson but if they handle anywhere as near as good as this ateca then they will be very special cars indeed because this thing is an absolute joy to drive you just want to chuck it in the corners you want to give it a bit of an exuberant kind of throw about when you're driving along and it does actually reward you and it does put a big smile on your face and that's one of the things I really do like about this Ateco is that it does feel like a Seat SUV it feels like those old Seats of old where they just drove brilliantly but you just got it in an SUV shell and that's something I really do like about it. Now, granted, this is two-wheel drive and the power goes to the front. So if you do chuck it into a corner on a damp day, it is going to let go and understeer, but it is very predictable. However, on the couple of days I have driven the Ateca and it's been dry, well, this thing just grips for dear life. And again, it just adds to that funness that you don't get from a lot of other SUVs in this class. 
Now also as well, when you do chuck it into a corner, there is the tiniest amount of lean, but it's nowhere near as kind of rolly as a Skoda Karok or a Peugeot 3008. Now granted, I've not driven the revised 3008, but if you want to know what the preface lifter was like, just click up in the top right hand corner. But yeah, ride refinement handling in this revised Ateca are really sweet. This is one of the real highlights on this car. And I know you can see me kind of bouncing up and down as I go over these sleeping policemen, but it's not uncomfortable. Firm, yes, but not uncomfortable. So it is actually a really nice car to drive from day to day. As I said, the only disappointment was driving on the motorway. So with my time in the new Ateca, are there any niggles or annoyances I need to let you know about? Well, in all honesty, I think I've covered them all. I mean, the biggest one for me is how they do the kit levels with the trim levels in terms of standard kit, because I've nearly got a top of the range Ateca here and I don't have heated seats and I haven't got a digital cockpit. And that's something I find really quite surprising and a bit disappointing on this type of car. I would definitely have expected those as standard. So that is one thing I would like to see Seat do with future generations of the Ateca and other cars in the range, where they just make sure that the more higher up the trim levels you go, the more kit you get and the more kit that you would expect in that type of car. Because of course, this particular car is just shy of £30,000. So that's just the main thing I would like Seat to look at for future generations of car. But other than that, I've been really impressed by it. I mean, yes, the interior hasn't got the most flamboyant of layouts. I mean, yes, the Peugeot 3008 still has the best looking interior, but it's lovely and workable. The ergonomics are really good. And it means that you're not distracted by anything in here and you can just focus on driving because that is the real highlight of the Ateca. Nothing else has that chuckability and fun factor in this price bracket. Of course, if you wanted to go completely balls out, then you can go for the Cupra Ateca with over 300 brake horsepower, four wheel drive, and that seven speed DSG. And then if that's a car that you would like me to review, then please let me know in the comment section below because we have got the revised Cooper Ateca and also the new Cooper Fermenter. And if you do follow on Instagram, you may have seen I've spotted a couple of them in Milton Keynes recently and they are bloody gorgeous to look at. But no, in terms of any kind of niggles I found with the Ateca, it's just the trim levels and the standard kit you get with them. But other than that, I've been really impressed by it. So what are my thoughts on the new or revised Seat Ateca? Well, when the Ateca first appeared, it blew everyone away because we had a good looking, practical and reasonably priced SUV that was also incredibly good fun to drive. And as time has gone on, yes, a number of its rivals have pipped it to the top spot, particularly if you're not after a sporty SUV. So cars like the Skoda Karak were deemed a better fit. But if you are still after a sporty, medium-sized family SUV for everyday driving, you can't really go wrong with the Ateca. You have got a great choice of trim levels and engines to go with it. As I said, just double check what you get as standard with each trim level. But in terms of that overall sporty SUV package, it does a brilliant job of ticking all those boxes. I have really, enjoyed it of course if you want to go nuts and go for the cupra you can do but that's technically not classed as a seat but in terms of a day-to-day -day suv it definitely has to be one you have to take a test drive in if you're just after a family mid-size suv because if you specify that comfort is important to you then i would probably recommend just staying away from the Ateca and go look at the Skoda Karok because it has all the practical strengths of the Seat but none of the sporty firm ride weaknesses if you consider them weaknesses. So yeah, the revised Ateca is still a bloody good all-round family SUV and I do recommend you take a test drive in it because on a B road it is still lots of fun 
and I really do love it. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my review on the revised Seat Ateca. As always, please hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notifications icon to let you know when I, Dave the Auto Bear, bring out a new video. Of course, I am on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and I always advise for you to follow me on there for additional content including live videos, still images of cars I review and events I go to. If you've got any questions about the new Ateca and my time with it, please put them down in the comments section below. But in the meantime, guys, I hope you're all staying safe, maintain your social distancing, wear a mask and wash your hands. And I will catch you all in the next video. So take care, have a great day and bye bye.